Hi, we're back at LiveInSudbury.com with Lois Carroll and Susan Morano from Wild Birds Unlimited. How are you, Susan? I'm fine. How are you, Lois? Welcome to both of you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we just wanted to ask you a couple of questions and then maybe tour the shop a little sure, bit. Sure, I'd love that. So how long have you been in Sudbury, Susan? We've been in business always in Sudbury for 20 years. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Congratulations. Wow. That's, Thank you. That's terrific. And... Um, out of all of the things, you have such an incredible variety of things in the shop. What would be your, what's your best seller coming into the winter season when everybody is so excited about feeding birds? Well, everyone's excited about feeding the birds, but what they're not excited about feeding about is squirrels. Mm. So our best seller at this time of year, and pretty much year-round, are squirrel-proof feeders. We have several different models. You can deny squirrels access based on size or based on weight. Hmm. And those are very popular. Interesting. Do you want to show us one? Sure, I'd be happy to. They're over here. This is probably our top model, and it's the one that um, gets a lot of good response from customers because it allows large birds as well as small birds to feed. But squirrels are very heavy, <clears throat> and a chickadee only weighs about three pennies. So when a squirrel gets on it, it shuts off the wing. The weight of the squirrel uh -huh. shuts off the feeder. Great. And keeps the food that fresh. That is really great. That is great. And these also do the same thing as well. All of these deny squirrels access and allow my customers to feed whom they want to feed, the birds. Although I will admit some customers do want to feed squirrels as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I got a great bird feeder several years uh, ago from here. And we like the squirrels, you know, they, they sort of feed some from some of the droppings. And... But they can't climb up it because uh, they there's a big what baffle. The on baffle, it. yes, yeah, that prevents them. That works so really well. uh, Mike had had a great question, and uh, Mike, our our video man, he had said, "What is the caviar of bird food?" I would say the caviar of bird food is whatever seasonal blend we have in stock. We stock four seasonal blends a year, corresponding with our seasons here in New England, spring, summer, mm -hmm. fall, and winter. Mm -hmm. And they're all specifically formulated, one, for our birds in this region, but also with specific ingredients that are required for that time of year. Right. For example, right now, we're getting ready to go into winter and we're in fall. It's getting colder during the day and colder at night. Birds need a high fat, high caloric content food because at night they shiver to stay warm and they can lose up to 10% of their body weight and a good percent of their body fat during the night doing mm. that. Wow. So they need a high caloric food during the day to help them maintain all that energy. So our winter blend, and as well as our fall blend, is loaded with tree nuts and peanuts and suet nuggets and fruit and seed, and it's just that great granola punch that you need to survive. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> One of the things I never knew that you sold um, when I came in here last time were bird feeders. Let's walk up, I'm sorry, bird baths. Let's walk over to the bird baths. Sure, of course. Which ones would you like to see? You want to take a look at these over here? Sure. So with people having so many sprinkler systems and, you know, the rain and all that, mm -hmm. why, why, why do people need bird baths? Or why do the birds need to be in a bird bath? Well, all birds need to bathe and all birds need to drink. By bathing, even in colder weather like this, it helps them have clean feathers. Clean feathers help them stay warm, and they also help them fly. Hmm, I didn't know, I never knew that. That's interesting. And so we have a variety of bird baths that allow you to provide water. Something low to the ground like that is going to be a free-for-all. Whoever can get to it will drink from it or bathe from it, including squirrels and chipmunks and what, skunks and things like that. The taller pedestal ones tend to be bird only. Hmm. But it's important to provide a fresh source of water. That's great. And tell us a little bit about uh, all the suet that you sell. Oh, we sell a variety of different suet. We have suet in different shapes and sizes for different feeders. We have suet plugs that fit into logs that have holes drilled out so that the woodpeckers can cling right on the log. It's like a tree, and it will fill it right in. Mm. We also have seed cakes, which are high in seed and nuts. And what these are doing, including these suet cakes, are re um, replacing the insects that birds can't find during the winter. Woodpeckers go after insects and bugs, and there aren't any at this time of year. So the suet, which is fat from around a beef kidney, helps to replace that protein for them. So when do you think it's good, when's a good time to start feeding the birds suet? Does it have to be colder than it is today? No, you can feed suet year-round because in the summer I do sell a special summer formula that won't drip and melt. Mm -hmm. But now's a perfect time to start feeding. Interesting. 
And do you recommend feeding birds in the summer as well as the winter, even though there's lots of worms and insects and in the well, ground? Well, I own this business. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Year round, feed the birds, feed the birds, feed the birds. It is, but one of the things is, I think bottom line, honestly, it's a wonderfully enjoyable hobby. And you should feed birds because you enjoy seeing them in your backyard, you like having them around. But honestly, if you want to feed birds when they need it most, and I use need in quotes, they need it more in spring and summer than they do in fall and winter. Why is that? Fall is the time of the greatest bounty from Mother Nature. Things go to harvest in the fall. Grass goes to seed, weed goes to seed, flowers go to seed. Mm -hmm. You have tree nuts and pine nuts and acorns and pine cones. It's a natural bounty. Hmm. As you go through winter, birds glean heavily from the natural environment assume they can get to it. There's not a lot of snow or ice. But comes spring <clears throat> and summer, time of high stress for your backyard songbirds. They're attracting a mate, they're defending a territory, they're feeding themselves, they're feeding their young. And there's the least amount of natural food in the environment because it's been gleaned throughout the whole fall and winter. Interesting. So birds who feed, a lot of my customers who feed the birds, comment to me they have more activity in spring and summer than they do in fall and winter because of that cycle of the natural crops. But also it's great fun to feed in the summer because the adult birds bring the baby birds to the feeders. You see them teaching them about sources of food and how to feed. I mean, baby birds are dumb just by definition, but nothing's quite <laughs> as dumb as a baby woodpecker. It's really fun to feed, them, feed from the feeder and try to figure out how to get to it. So you must have great books in here that someone can come in and buy and learn about the different birds we do. and who's the dumb bird versus the smart bird. And we have a lot of really cool books. Um, not only ID guides to help people ID what they're seeing. We have a great book called Birds of Massachusetts, and it's just birds you find here in the state. And it's organized by color, which makes it very easy for people to find what they're seeing. Oh, that is. But I also have other guides that talk more about behavior and migration and feather coloration. Something for every level of inquisitiveness mm. in terms mm. of, of birding. And you can never have too many field guides. Well, maybe you can. But what I've learned over time is that different field guides have different information. So if I want to find out about, say, the Northern Cardinal, I can, I'll read it in three or four different guides because it's going to give me all different kinds of information. Mm -hmm. No one guide has everything. <clears throat> has the um, bird population been increasing or decreasing in this area? Every year it's different. Um, they do a Christmas bird count every year right around Christmas time mm -hmm. in the Concord area, which includes Sudbury. And they record what they see, and there are fluctuations in bird populations from mm -hmm. year to year. It mm -hmm. may have to do with the amount of natural food in the environment. This year, for example, or last, I said last, Last fall was time of great plenty, good food crop, bumper crop of a lot of baby birds this spring and summer. It will be interesting to see if there's a change in population when they do the count this Christmas as opposed to last Christmas because of that plentiful food. Years when food's not that plentiful in the spring or the weather's really rainy or cold, that could impact the breeding population. Interesting. And um, are there any unique bird sightings you've heard of recently? I mean, do some of your customers come and share all this information with you? Oh, of course they you? do. <laughs> of course they do. Um, right now we're starting to get a lot of the species from up in Canada coming down because there was not a very good crop of tree nuts and pine nuts up in Canada. So it's forcing the birds to come down not only earlier than they normally would to find food, but coming further south for them. Um, pine siskins have been reported. Evening grosbeaks have been reported around. Um, we should be probably getting crossbills and hairy red poles, red breasted not hatches. Birds that are just down here for the winter, they're coming earlier and they'll probably stay a lot longer. That's really exciting. It makes me want to get all different types of bird feeders and stay home and not work. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Carol? <laughs> hmm. I have a one quick question. Sure, of course. So Carol. if you were going to be a bird, any bird you could be, what bird are you going to be, Susan? I think I would like to be a titmouse. Why? And why is that? <laughs> they're, they're gray. They have a tufted little top. But they're what I call a very perky bird. They always just look bright and cheery. I know we shouldn't anthropomorphize, but they have this <laughs> tuft, and they have these bright black eyes, and their nice little gray body. And they just flit around from branch to branch and feed very happily. And I, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me, too. Well, thank you so Thanks much so for much. spending some time with us. Well, thank um, you for coming. Your, your store is always so cheerful to come into. And, 
and there's always new products and it's just a feast for the eyes and we wish you a great Christmas and holiday season. Thank you so much Lois. Thank, Thank you Carol for coming in. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you.